This video has been made possible by BenQ. If you're a digital artist in need of a professional monitor, then check out the link below. Welcome back. So far, we have been using a lot of ZModeler. We're going to have to dig a little deeper into the ZBrush modeling toolbox for these models. We will touch on Snapshot 3D, Booleans with ZRemesher 3.0, and one of my recent favorites, Project Primitive. Let's start out with Snapshot 3D. With Snapshot, you are creating geometry with alphas. You can use and modify the alphas that come with ZBrush, or you can create your own and import them in through the alpha palette, which is what I did for this model. Took a top view of my reference and traced over the shape. Filled the shape with pure white and the rest with 100% black. Once you import it through the alpha palette, select it and click on the Add to Spotlight button. Drag it over and snap it to the middle of the star. Click on the camera icon on the dial and the alpha will turn into geometry. The depth is determined by the selected subtool. Select the front poly group and delete hidden. Mirror and weld in the X and delete by symmetry. In the Z remesher settings, set the target poly count to 1 and the adaptive size to 0. Select the Move Brush and turn on AccuCurve. It's located in the Brush Palette under the Curve sub-palette. AccuCurve will help pull out the sharp corners. Turn on half and zero measure and run it a couple more times. Move the outer points to maintain the shape. When zero meshing a symmetrical object, you can either turn on symmetry or delete by symmetry. I haven't seen much of a difference in the final result between the two of them. Usually I will turn on symmetry when a mesh is symmetrical in one axis. If it's symmetrical in more than one axis, then I'll delete by symmetry. It's just a personal preference. Turn on Dynamic and Crease PG. Make a couple of clips to straighten the edges and you'll be ready to append it back into the Road Grader tool. Select the base, turn on dynamic, and crease the edges. 
Change the smooth subdivisions to 2 and hit apply. Select the outer ring and delete the top and the bottom. Delete lower subdivisions, then delete loops and QMesh all polygons. Add an edge loop on the inside, QMesh that poly loop, select poly group with poly loop and checker as the target. Tap Alt to change the poly group colors if needed. Select QMesh poly group all. Crease the edges on polygon action select crease poly loop and inner target selected as the modifier. Click and hold down alt to uncrease. Then group visible. Add an edge loop toward the top for separation. Select insert multiple edge loops so you can add one right in the middle. We need to split and delete edges to manipulate the edge flow before extruding. Paint in a white poly group by holding down Alt, then QMesh them out. Extrude out two rear faces and transpose them out to the shape of the reference. Try to angle the edge loops as you're extruding. Don't be too picky for this section. General shape and edge flow is what we're going for. Once you get the basic shape, start moving points using the Z Muller brush. Point action to move, target set at infinite depth. Be careful not to cross over to the other parts of the mesh. Z Modeler move points will respect masking.
Turn on dynamic and crease edges. For this section, I'm not worried about the sharp edges. Those will be covered up with welds. Pretty much anything that's not bolted down will have welds. Now let's make the base of the hydraulics. Open up a new tool and bring in a polysphere from the gizmo. Select the extender and move up in the Y a little bit. Press accept when finished. Delete half and close holes. You could also delete by symmetry. Mask the sphere and bring in a cylinder 3D. Split mask points and select the extender. Scale and move it into place. Move the bottom flush with the sphere and adjust the top. Turn on dynamic and crease edges. Then merge the subtool down and clip the bottom. Use DynaMesh Master at a poly count of 0.5 on the slider. Run a polish. Smooth the corners with the weighted smooth mode set to 1. You could also use the smooth stronger brush that's located in the light box. Select the bottom to create a new poly group and then delete the bottom. Mirror and weld in the X. You can either delete by symmetry or press X to zero mesh symmetrically. Set the target poly count to 1 and adaptive size to 25. Turn on half and run Ziri Mesher again. Sometimes you'll get a stray polygroup. 
Just delete it and it'll run fine. Mirror and weld. Remove the crease in the middle. Close the bottom up with the Z-Modeler brush and inset the flat island. QMesh Polygroup. Duplicate the mesh and rotate it 180 degrees. Scale the bottom up a tad. Mask everything and center the gizmo. Add a polysphere and split mass points. Move the subtool to the bottom of the list and turn on live booleans. You will also have to turn on the subtract icon in the subtool list. What I use is a plugin called EZ Boolean. It's one click that has a nice preview of the boolean operation on the button. Position the sphere inside the mesh and click Make Boolean Mesh. It's located in the subtool palette under the Boolean subpalette. That will make a new tool. Booleans also keep the polygroups, which is extremely important when doing Z-Remesh. Slice the top and extrude it up. Smooth out the extrusion, slice off the top, and delete it. To demonstrate zero mesher with symmetry, I'll leave symmetry on for the first round. Then undo the zero mesher and do it again with symmetry off but only half the mesh showing. You will basically get the same topology. So which method you choose is up to you. Zero mesher 3.0 did a really good job with the boolean mesh. I run it again with half and stay with this topology. Mirror and weld and remove the crease down the middle. Like I said earlier, I usually don't use delete by symmetry, but I was in a mood to use it for this project. Turn on dynamic and let's see what we got. We have to fix these sharp edges. Select Inset Poly Loop and inset on the top and the bottom.
Then select Delete Edge Loop Partial. Use Mask Polygroup Island and select the two polygroups. Invert the mask. Use the gizmo to straighten out those edge loops. You can also go back and use Q Mesh with Shift to give you some thickness on single polys. Close the top and extrude it up. Remove any unwanted creases and you can continue the modeling from here. Now for the main hydraulic. Bring in a cylinder 3D, scale it down in the Y, then add in an edge loop. Slightly move the middle, turn on symmetry in the Y and set the radial count to 4. Alt click the two polys. Add an edge loop at the bottom and Q mesh them in. Mask the two edges. Invert the mask and move them down with the gizmo. Crease the top and the bottom. Then add in supporting edge loops. On the bottom, inset poly loop and Q mesh in. Crease PG and turn on dynamic. Q mesh the top and hold control to separate it. Q mesh again to add thickness. Select Move Island to position it closer to the model. Unmask the top and move up. Add edge loops to tighten up the ends.
Select Inset Flat Island and QMesh Out. Unmask the end and move out. Adjust the size and add an edge loop. Inset and Q-mesh the ends. Add in some edge loop for beveling. When doing multiple edge loops with interactive elevation, Try not to go overboard with the amount of loops. For the plow, I started with a polycube. Scale it in and give it some length. Rotate it to be Z forward and mirror and weld. Make some adjustments and give it four edge loops. Center the gizmo and select bend arc. Adjust the angle and radius. Press accept when finished. Crease edges and turn on dynamic.
Grab the slice curve and slice close to the edge. Slice curve does not work symmetrically so you will have to mirror and weld. Bevel the middle edge loop and Q-mesh the bottom polys. Use extrude instead of Q-mesh to extrude the four end polys. Q-mesh will snap the polys together and we want a space between them. Unmask the edge loop and move it over if it's too thick. Unmask the bottom points and bring them in for more of an arc. Slice an edge loop in the middle of the plate we extruded. Add another one on the other side and mirror and weld. Alt click those 8 polys and Q mesh them out. Add an edge loop Q mesh that poly in to create separation. Space out the edges so there won't be any surface errors. Then Q-mesh the bottom polys. Add in an edge loop and increase the edges. Try to create a nice transition from the main plow to the plates.
QMesh to two polys for extra detail. For the plow, there will be a lot of back and forth trying to troubleshoot the shape. Alt click the back six polys and Q mesh. Make some scaling adjustments. Then move the center poly inward to create the curve. Slice the ends and move the inner points out. Collapse the excess edges. Cumesh the flat island and create the lip. Turn on dynamic and crease the edges. At this point I'm trying to figure out how to resolve the lack of thickness under the lip. When you slice part way through a poly, it will automatically bridge the edges. Collapse and delete edges to clean it up. Now back to the thickness issue. I'll add an edge loop going lengthways. Move the points inward to help with the curve and slice in an edge loop running vertical.
Make some final creases and the base will be finished. Now let's tackle the hydraulic arm supports. Select a new tool and grab a polyplane from the gizmo. Divide it up a few times and delete the lower subdivisions. Start masking in the basic shape of the arm. This part does not have to be perfect. Most of the shape will be formed with lower topology. Press Ctrl W to create a polygroup from the mask, select the polygroup and delete hidden. Run a polish by features to clean up the edges. If needed, click repeat to active in the deformation subpalette. Z remesher set at 3 for the target poly count and adaptive size at 0. Switch to half and run that a few times. Switch to the move brush and start refining the shape. Turn on AccuCurve to pull out sharp corners. Then run Z Remesher at half again. Continue this process until you're happy with the shape and topology. With Slice Curve, create a polygroup where the bend would be. Press Zero Mesher with Keep Groups On and Same Enabled. Control click on the blue polygroup with the gizmo to mask it and rotate it forward at the polygroup edge. Q-mesh all polygons, then flip the faces. Mask out the top, then invert the mask. Select the three middle points and scale it in. Press accept, group by normals and crease PG.
Run a polish by features to smooth out the top. Give the edges a pretty big bevel and use multiple edge loops to round it out. Turn on dynamic, slide the edge loops closer to the ends to square it out. Apply the dynamic subdivisions and delete the lower subdivisions. Run Dynamesh Master with a 0.5 poly count. I'm going to extend the arms a little bit further than the reference so the project primitives will have something more to grab onto. Dynamesh it again and smooth out any surface errors. Bring up the gizmo and select Project Primitive. This won't be an elaborate breakdown of how to use Project Primitive. I'll just touch on a few options that are relative to this video. The amount of cones can be overwhelming at first, but once you play with it for a bit, it's really fun. Gives you a nice blend between the primitive and the model. By clicking the white cone to accept it, you can lock in that primitive and continue to move around the mesh with new ones. When you click the gear icon, you will see four options with Project Primitive. Accept, Reset, Full Reset, and Delete. 
except we'll do the same thing as the white cone with the difference being it will get you out of project primitive mode. Click that one when you are finished completely. Reset will reset the primitive to the middle of the model and full reset will reset the position and the primitive type. It's like starting up project primitive for the first time. Delete will remove any actions you did and get you out of project primitive mode. You will notice there are white dots around the gizmo. Those are used to clip the primitive. Holding shift while moving the dots will clip the primitive symmetrically. Also, each primitive has the option to have polygroups. You will also notice that the primitives can be additive or subtractive depending on its depth. Once finished with Project Primitive, press Accept. Then re-dynamesh the model. Select Mask Circle and unmask the cylinder tops. I like using the planar rectangle brush or the clip curve brush to flatten out the tops. Mask out the model and add in a polycube from the gizmo. Control move to make a duplicate. Control drag to unmask. Control drag again to dynamesh. Select Project Primitive and move it to the bottom of the arm.
rotate it 90 degrees Press accept and clip the sides. Then smooth out the surface. Make sure you are using a tablet to get more control. Use the planar rectangle brush to start out the cut and use the planar brush to level it across. Mask the model and bring in a cylinder 3D from the gizmo. Scale it and position it in place. Then mask the model and add in a polycube. Select the cylinder and the cube and click group as Dynamesh sub to make it a white polygroup. Now you can go to the gizmo and select remesh by union. Or you can re-dynamesh it and it will cut out that shape. Go back and re-establish those flat planes. Take the move brush and fix some of those curves. You can also add a polycube in the middle and cut out the remaining shape using the same method. Two ways I would go about retoppling this model. The first is to use polygroup it to establish my polygroups 
and then use Z remesher. The other way is manual retopology. It wasn't that time consuming of a mesh to do manually, so I went that way. So I went ahead and did some more modeling. The piece in the middle is just duplicated cylinders that were bridged. Same workflow as the front plate. Made some hose clamps, and the motors in the middle are box modeling techniques we already covered. To make the hoses, I used the curved tube brush. When hovering over the curve, you can adjust the brush size to influence the range of movement. Smaller brush size equals less movement. Larger size, more of the curve comes along for the ride. When hovering over the canvas and changing the brush size, you are now changing the size of the tube. For the curved tube, I usually have liquid turned on. You can find that option in the stroke palette under the curve sub palette. Liquid lets you continuously extend the tube without drawing out more of the curve first. Holding down shift will smooth out the curve. However, you will have to click on the curve first, then press shift. I often go to solo mode to reposition the curve so the other subtools will not interfere with the movement. No matter the distance of the movement, you can always go back and smooth the curve to make it more natural. As I am positioning the tube, I'm thinking about gravity, how other hoses will affect the position, and checking references of how other hydraulic hoses are sitting. It does take some time to position, but with the addition of liquid and the ability to smooth with the shift key, it has really sped up this process. When you have the tube in position, instead of dragging out another tube and repositioning it, you can go to the stroke palette under curve function and click snapshot. That will duplicate the curve and mask the original one. It is great for creating tubes that are close to each other. The hot key for snapshot I believe is 5. Split mass points and delete the ends of the hoses. Run Z remesher twice with half clicked and adaptive size to zero. Go to delete loops and start out with an angle of five. 
That usually does a good job of removing the edge loops that are not needed to hold the form. Crease PG to crease the borders and turn on dynamic. Now we can go back and do some small tweaks to the position with the move brush. This is my workflow for hoses and wires. I end up with a decent amount of polys that can be UV'd and textured on while still maintaining the form. Spend some time on these hydraulic hoses. They will be the eye candy that captures people's attention. That's it for part four. I hope to see you in the last video where we will start on the cab and work on the details.